pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We follow that with a moment of silence so each can use it as they choose. to item number three, communication from patrons. And as always, we ask you to state your name clearly before you bring up the item you'd like to talk about. Jerry Gates, uh, three questions. Are the items listed under the superintendent comments a done deal? Second question. Has there been a cost analysis done comparing opening up the old superintendent building as opposed to what is proposed in that item? Question three, what are the plans for the old superintendent building? Thank you. Who is to speak to the superintendent building? The old one? Um, well, I, I know very little about it, but I'll say a couple words about the old superintendent building. Um, I know we did discuss the cost factor of opening that up again, considering heating and cooling and all that. And then I, I understand that the telephone system has not been updated over there when it was here. And that's about all I know about that. <laughs> I had spoken with the board in a variety of ways on a number of occasions relative to is there interest in looking to move back over there? And I got no positive response from anyone to doing that. Money is an issue, yes, but the proximity of the work that goes on in the superintendent's office to be in the building here seems to offset being going over there. And we do have some important things over there. Uh, the servers for our technology, computer servers, are located over there. Uh, records, historical records, the school corporation is still located over there. So it's, it's not that it's not being used, it's just that the utility factor of it is minimized by not being in it. What we're looking at now is the possibilities of converting a classroom, that area just across the hall from what was the elementary principal's office where the superintendent is now, uh, converting that to an office space for superintendent business manager so that the elementary principal can have that office back and use it as it was designed to be used. Uh, we had it looked at by a contractor today and give you any idea what the price will be on a quote to convert it to a floor plan that will work. But uh, that's what we're doing. That's what we're looking at. Thank you. Your first question. Whether it was a done deal at this point. The uh, comments. None of those are done deals. <laughs> we're all in the stage of getting quotes and working with those that are quoting on what the scope of that work would look like as well as the cost. Uh, two of those projects are expensive. The boilers and the parking lot are expensive projects. And so we're working diligently to get what's needed but at the best, uh, the best price. The boilers, for example, Jerry, right now we're looking at removing three of the five and replacing those three with two new ones new ones that will have the capacity to take care of all. And we would then still have two of the old ones as backups should we have a problem down the road. That's what, that's the kind of configuration we're looking at on that. Okay. 
Okay. Any other patron comments? Okay, we'll go to item number four, approval of the minutes. We have <coughs> minutes from the executive session of April 17th, the regular board meeting of April 17th, executive session after the board meeting April 17th, and then a special meeting on May 1st. Um, the board's had a chance to look at those. I'll entertain a motion to approve those minutes. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Are there any questions from uh, anyone on the board? Okay, all in favor of approving those minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed? It uh, passes, 5-0. Okay, item five, personnel changes. Uh, we have quite a list here. The, the, the first category, uh, there are no new retirements, but no. under A, okay. <laughs> B, under resignations, we have six listed. Linda Flower, Amanda Malone, Laura Elpers, Shannon Stark, Justin Montel, and Jay Frymiller. Under appointments, um, we have Rebecca Vamus, elementary principal, a two-year contract. <coughs> Nick Medich, junior senior high principal, one-year contract. John Alcorn, dean of students and athletic director, one-year contract. Charles Netrauer, Director of Maintenance and Building and Grounds, one-year contract. And that would be under C, Appointments. Under Employment, we have Samantha Hopkins, Ashley Thayer, Carrie Bradway, all elementary teachers, Peter Foster, Junior Senior High Band and Choir teacher. And we need to thank the... Uh, is going to be introduced. I will All right. To. I will Thank to you. Okay, that's okay. Um, excited about our new teachers. Our first teacher here is Carrie Bradway, and Carrie is going to be teaching sixth grade language arts and uh, social studies. I'm working with Amy Overmeyer to do that. She has experience with uh, at-risk students and students that don't speak a lot of English, and she will be a first-year teacher. However, she has served what ten years. 10 years in the Air Force, so in, in another life, right, before teaching. <laughs> so we are glad she is here. We also have Ashley Thayer, and Ashley has served as a cheer coach in Argus for three years, right? Is that what you told me at night? Okay, three years. <laughs> and um, she did her student teaching here in fourth grade with Mrs. Stoltz, and um, she's also a substitute teacher, so, you know, we've seen her in action, and we are excited she's here as well. And over here I have Sammy Hopkins, we have Sammy, and Sammy graduated from Ball State, and she did student teach in fifth grade, yes, and um, we are excited because she graduated from Argus, and so we celebrate and welcome her home. <laughs> and you do, would you like to introduce your family? Oh, sure. sure. <laughs> over here is my mom and my stepdad, Becky and Andy, and this is my brother Thomas, he is a junior here at Argus. Very good, thank you. Welcome board. And then Rocky, yes. And I'm here in with Mr. Medich, he's at a conference, and so I'd like to present Mr. Peter Foster. He comes to us with a vast you know, knowledge of music, and has old experience in many places, <laughs> and he's come to us from most recently Triton, so he knows the area, he knows what it's like to be in this kind of atmosphere, and we'd like you to welcome him, Mr. Foster. Well, thank you. Um, I will not be long-winded and I can be. Mm -hmm. So um, I told Betty that back in 73 for I first started teaching, I got an opportunity to see the band of gold from artists. It was huge. Scared the love and stuff that's right out of me because I was a beginning year band teacher and I thought I'm competing against them. Well it is wonderful to be able to come to Argus and hopefully get things Jump start it again where it was before and make the community, the school, and the students proud of the artist students department. And I'm looking forward to getting started. Um, just excited to be here. Well, I'll, I'll welcome you with the stipulation that have not been approved yet. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I did wear a black shirt. <laughs> uh, summer school teachers are listed 
uh, in item E, John Arndt, Brenda Baker, Sarah Lovelet, um, Jennifer Thomas, Carrie Edison, Rachel Tetz, and Natasha Blackford. And then there are, in F, there are still some positions to be filled yet for the next school year. So I think, uh, unless there's a question or something from the board, I think we can approve all those with one motion if I get a said motion. Items A through F, I guess. I'll make a motion that we approve the items as read. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded that we approve all of the items under personnel changes. Is there any discussion? Can you uh, just confirm the two-year contract for um, the FAMOS as a regulatory item as opposed to the one-year contract for the other administrators? Good point. Uh, go ahead. As I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong, it, as her first regular contract, as a principal, it needs to be two years by law. Statute. Yes. Statute, yes. Okay. Uh, Becky, you mentioned when you uh, introduced Ms. Bradway uh, that she was going to be doing language arts and one other. So is it not going to be, I mean, is it not going to be the traditional lineup that sixth grade has been divided as, or is it going to be a real? That is the, that is the traditional lineup. Okay. So Amy teaches math and she teaches science. Amy O'Brien. So we will we will continue in that vein. Okay. Any further questions? Okay. Then we'll uh, vote on these items. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5-0. Okay, item number six, the impact of the bond issue. Uh, Dr. Boyd, talk about this. Yes, and uh, we'll entertain questions and comments when I finish a little introduction of this. Many of you have been with us for several meetings running now. So you know we've been talking about a bond issue in the amount of two million dollars that will be used in a variety of ways to offset the financial situation that the district found itself in this past year. That bond issue is going to be in the amount of two million dollars. It will yield for us one, about 1.9 million dollars. Now how is that 1.9 million dollars going to be used? First of all, the law allows us to reimburse the general fund for capital expenditures made from the general fund over the last five years. For us, that would amount to about $1.6 million. What we plan to do in our early thinking on the bond issue is to reimburse the general fund in an amount somewhere between 800,000 and a million dollars of that 1.9 million. This in effect becomes instant cash, if you will, to the cash flow of the general fund. It's one of the things that is allowing us to step back now and write some of the things that we lost as a result of the referendum process, particularly as it relates to the elementary school program and its leadership. So by putting that cash infusion to the general fund should give us a stability over the course of the next four years at least in terms of cash flow to meet the educational programming needs of the Argos Community Schools. In addition, we would anticipate in the neighborhood of a half a million of that 1.9 million going to the capital projects that Jerry raised questions about earlier so that this becomes a part of that bond issue. That's, like I said, primarily dealing with the boiler situation here as well as the parking lot and its needs. But in addition, we're going to do some internal 
kinds of things as well with some carpet replacement, some painting, some other kinds of adjustments in the inside of the, of the structure. And that includes converting a classroom to an office complex for the school corporation. That would leave somewhere in the neighborhood of $400,000 that we can receive to the capital projects fund. We'll receive that to the capital projects fund so that as we face emergency or crisis situations in the future, we can respond to them on a cash basis. Now, what are those going to be? We hope nothing, but we know better. We know that uh, our water lines are old and cause us trouble. We know that boilers may continue with the other two to not be the backup we hope they can be. We know if it's school building, it's got a roof problem. Everyone I've ever been in has one at some point. So this has kind of been a savings account to deal with those kinds of issues in the future. In addition, as that builds up, that capital project builds up, we can at some point at the close of the year transfer some portion of that to a rainy day fund, which again is another legal fund the state of Indiana allows us, that really puts it into a flexible account that can be appropriated and used for whatever needs come up at the time. Now, as I said, this carries us financially in really good shape for about four years. What it does, in effect, is give us a, gives us about a half a million dollars a year for each of four years to meet our needs. But it asks that in 2021, when three of our major outstanding debts we currently have are paid off, that we exercise another bond issue at that point to carry us another four or five years. It's a plan to respond to the negative outcome of the referendum. It responds with about half of the dollar yield that the referendum would have yielded. It's going to do it in a tax rate impact that's minuscule. Our estimates at this point in time have been anywhere from 1.7 cents on the tax rate to a nickel. And between now and whenever we execute the bonds, depending on interest rates at the time, is going to determine what that, what the interest rate on those bonds are going to be. So, that's a penny to five cents on the tax rate. The second bond issue that's contemplated in this plan should be able to be accomplished within the current tax rate without any increase at that point in time. That's the plan, that's the idea. Questions or comments? One of the questions I've, go oh, ahead, I'm sorry, oh, it was your question. I just wanted to ask, um, it seems like when they presented there were two payback periods, there was one that was a bit longer and one that was a bit shorter. Or is the 1.7 cents to 5 cents, is that based on the longer or the shorter? We, we currently have four major outstanding indebtednesses. Three of those four will pay off by 2021. One pays off in 18, one in 19, one in 20. So by 21, they'll be paid off, which will leave us in nearly a debt-free situation. We'll have a pension bond issue that goes on for some time yet. Eventually, essentially leave us in a debt-free position. Uh, school corporations in Indiana uh, measure themselves in terms of debt to assess value total. What's the ratio or the percentage of capital debt to its assessed value? That ranges in Indiana 
all the way from 0% to 75 or 80%. The average gets in at about 10 to 12%. We come in at about 2%. So we have been frugal. You have good facilities that need to be updated and taken care of, but we've been frugal with respect to your debt indebtedness over the years. Now we can come in and we can take care of the cash flow issues until such time as the General Assembly decides they're going to treat rural education fairly. That may be in your lifetime, maybe not mine, but it's got to happen someday. We have to protect ourselves from now until that happens. And this is a way to do it without injuring the taxpayer too much. I, I had a conversation the other day with Mike Heckman, Frank, and he was figuring up the debt per cow. <laughs> you know, Mike, he's a big dairy farmer, and he had figured out debt per cow, we're okay with this. We're going to be all right. I had, uh, I'm, a, I'm on the farm, but I never thought of debt per cow. Are we, I think the question was, are we considering the eight-year payback? We're on the eight-year payback. Yeah, yes. Phrase it very yes. Yeah. So it's on yeah. the very low payback. payback the first couple of years till these other issues gotcha. pay off, right. and then it comes up. Okay. That, okay. that was right. in the chart we showed you the, when Humboldt was here for presentation. Right. Right. Well, I appreciate the extra information as well. Yeah. <laughs> Which, I mean, that's, that's the more expensive option to go the eight, but it normalizes kind of what that tax rate looks like. So it, it's designed to be minimally impactful. Sure. Any other questions? Okay, well, we, don't, we don't need to take any action on this tonight. Yeah, well, yeah. in effect, it, it comes Numbers, under number seven. Number uh, eight, actually. Oh, number okay. Well, we need to do number seven first. We need to approve the legal counsel for the bond issue. Uh, I hope I say this right. Taft, Stettinius, and Hollister. Sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah, if, okay. If I may jump in, Mr. Good, President. Good. Um, your bond council has prepared uh, two resolutions for your consideration tonight. And, and uh, of course, the purpose of the hearing has been well explained by the super, your superintendent. Um, and you've had an opportunity for questions. Uh, so if you're at that point, the, the first resolution, uh, and the reason I jumped in, because it resolves that you will, uh, that there's projects to be constructed for the purposes of providing educational improvement and environment for students at the buildings owned and operated by the school, and then that the total estimated hard and soft cost of construction is 1900000 resulting in total aggregate project costs, including estimated cost of issuance at 200000 This is the project resolution that I'm proposing to pass. It goes on to say, uh, gives the tax rate, uh, tax fund rate of 0.0571 per, per $100 assessed valuation. And then it further resolves that you hire H.J. Elmbaugh Associates, certified public accountant, as an appointed financial advisor for this matter, and the Taft firm uh, to be retained as bond counsel, and that the president or secretary of the board are authorized to direct and execute any engagement letters submitted by each of those firms with respect to the findings. So, so you're uh, saying is separate motion for that and he's got it all included in a one project resolution so if you would approve the project resolution this evening you can cover sort of three different items but then I still have you approving another one if I may so as it's stated in number seven if that's stated as okay for us to approve that on the agenda that you, you may okay Okay. Can you read that again, Jim? Yes. <laughs> project resolution. I mean, will you read that again, Jim? I can. I'm confident in your ability to do so. <laughs> the project resolution has been prepared by your bond council. Uh, indicates that, be it resolved, that the projects will be constructed for the purpose of providing an improved educational program and environment for students at buildings owned or operated by the school board. It further resolved that the total estimated hard and soft cost of construction is $1.9 million, resulting in total aggregate project costs, including estimated costs of issuance, is $2 million. Be it resolved that the project 
projected $2 million would be funded by a bond issue with an anticipated incremental impact on the debt service fund tax rate of 0.057 per $100 assessed valuation. Be it further resolved that HJL Bond Associates Certified Public Accountants LLP is appointed as financial advisor and Taft uh, and Hollister LLP is hereby retained as bond counsel and that the president or secretary of the board are authorized and directed to execute any engagement letters submitted by each of those firms with respect to financing passed and adopted this 15th day of May 2017. Thanks, Jim. Okay. He's, he's entitled it Project Resolution. So. Project Resolution. Okay, do we have a motion to approve the Project Resolution? So moved. And a second? I'll second. Okay, any further discussion or questions? Okay, all those in favor signify with an aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, passes 5-0. Now, if I may, uh, along with uh, that resolution, uh, there's a resolution approving the form of the amendment to a lease. And after some whereas clauses that uh, pretty much refer to the previous lease that you've entered into, um, and that you want to go forward with a, a sixth amendment to those leases, it's now therefore being resolved that the terms and conditions of the proposed form of Sixth Amendment and plans and specifications and estimates are approved and agreed to as the basis for a hearing and required by law <coughs> that such hearing shall be held by this board of necessity for the execution of such Sixth Amendment and whether the lease rental provided therein is a fair and reasonable rental for the proposed improvements prior to final determination of such questions so that this, may, this board may determine whether to execute such Sixth Amendment as now written or modified. Said hearing to be held on Monday, June 19, 2017, 7 p.m. at the uh, school offices. Be it further resolved, the Secretary of the Board is directed to publish the notice of such hearing. So in other words, by this one, you are approving the form of the lease. I will tell you, that Mr. Gates, as president of the Marcus Building Corporation, has called a meeting of the Building Corporation for Thursday, May 18th. And that corporation is going to consider the same lease and improvements thereof. So presuming that they approve these, the lease and so forth, that will have been accomplished by the time you come back on the May 19th and uh, hold a hearing and consider the so this one is entitled resolution approving form of the amendment to lease. Not that you're approving the amendment, just as to the form. Okay, do we have a motion to approve the resolution approving the form? So moved. Got a second? I'll second. Okay. Are there any questions? Okay, we'll take a vote. Signify by aye. Aye. Aye, aye opposed. And five zero. If I can get you to sign those and you slip out. Unless you have other business for me, I will slip out. You're welcome to stay. Uh, well, I know it. I appreciate that. It looks like there's some exciting business on hand, but, uh, uh, but it's just three places. So. To save you money. And if anyone wants to make sure Jim gets out safely, you might walk him out too. Okay. That county meeting this morning, so it's been a long day of meetings. And the media will attest to that. I saw you there. So. <laughs> Well, we thank you for being here tonight, taking care of this yep. for us. I, uh, no problem, and I'll see the building court one Thursday, and I'm not sure whether I'll be back on the 19th or not, but we'll be fine out. And uh, if it's okay with you, I'll provide you, or I'll send out the signed copies of all these things. Oh, okay. Okay.
Okay, well, thank you, Jim. Okay, we'll move to item nine. Uh, approval to dispose of outdated technology items. Is that information need to go through this? I'll speak to that. Uh, yeah. This is just um, old technology equipment that we've had that's either failed or uh, no longer usable in our situation here. Uh, we do this every year since I've been here now. Uh, we basically disassemble the PCs and electronics, take them over to the salvage, and get a little bit of get back habit that goes back into the CPF, right? But yeah, it's a small little token of change to get back for our equipment instead of just paying the recycling firm just to take it at no cost. So moved. Okay, thank you, Doug. Is there a second? <coughs> Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Are there any questions for Mr. Montal or discussion? Okay, we'll take a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the motion passes. Okay, item number 10. Approval of the science textbook adoption for grades K through 12. Is there someone who need to speak to this? Announced at the last meeting, the books were on display from the yeah, gaps. Yeah, so, so, yes, we're left. I guess we'll entertain a motion. So moved. Okay, I have a second to a motion to approve the science textbook adoption. I'll second. Thank you. Any discussion? Okay, vote. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Five zero. Okay, approval of the 2017-2018 student handbook. Um, is there a motion to approve? So moved. And a second. I'll second. Okay. Now, is there any discussion on the student handbook? I shared with the rest of the board via email uh, that. I didn't see the need for the uh, one change in the bylaws for the student council. There was a change in that the outgoing seniors were to be a part of the selection committee process for determining who the viable candidates were for selection for student council. And my thinking is that that would be similar to an outgoing legislator having a hand in choosing who was available as uh, selections to be his or her replacement so i don't see that that's a viable or or in my case that i would be consulted as to who would be a replacement to fill my board seat when i'm done i just don't see that there's precedent for that or a need for that the other changes i had no issue with two comments in response if i might uh, first of all, this question came late last week when you got the, the handbook. It needs to get to the printer in order for us to get it by the start of school. Nick was gone today and tomorrow uh, for the safety meetings in Indianapolis. So I didn't have a chance to have a conversation with him about that. I would encourage the board to go ahead and approve the handbook so we can get it to the printer and get it back in a timely way. And we will have conversation relative to that question. Okay. okay. Any further questions? <clears throat> okay, we'll take a vote on the approval of the handbook. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Three, five zero. Okay, item number 12, approval of the elementary art to remember fundraiser for next school year. Elementary art to remember. I think I read that right. <laughs> Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Okay, Jenny, and a second? I will second. Okay. Okay, is there any discussion or question or is there anything that needs to be presented or said concerning this?
Okay, seeing or hearing none, uh, we'll take a vote to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. okay, items for future discussion. None are listed. Is there anything for future discussion? Anyone? Okay, approval of claims. Item number 14, Jennifer. Okay. Uh, your claim docket this evening has nine, nine pages of accounts payable claims in the amount of $242,250.28 and four pages of payroll claims totaling $236,368.09 for a total $478,618.37. Okay. So we have a motion to approve those claims as read by Jennifer. I will make the motion to approve claims as read. All righty. And a second? I'll second. Okay, all in favor? And well, is there any discussion or questions first? I guess we had a chance to look at them. So. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, five zero. And financial reports. What you'll see up on the screen might be a little small for, for the audience here, but uh, it's on your agendas as well. Just a summary of the taxable funds. Uh, and this is a suggestion by Dr. Boyd. It's something that I've kind of been thinking about anyway. So um, uh, here it is. It just basically shows the beginning balance uh, for each of those taxable funds at the beginning of the month. Then the, the revenue that came in, the expenditures that went out, giving us the close, the ending balance at the end of April 2017. And you can see all those maybe, uh, <coughs> see them. Uh, so our general fund balance is $385,431.50. And that's for the year 2017. And you can read the other funds. I did want to give just, you see the uh, little bullet points underneath, that the general fund receives revenue from the state every month. And so, uh, that balance gets replenished on our basic grant, which is based on our ADM um, student count. And then our debt service, our pension debt, capital projects, transportation, and bus replacement funds are all replenished biannually. They are replenished in June and replenished in December based on our tax payments um, that come. So you'll notice that the uh, Capital projects fund in particular is thirteen thousand, and yes, we'll get into the to the bottom there, but it will be replenished in June, and that's how the, the budgeting process <coughs> works. Um, just for anyone who's interested in that, so so we are looking forward to our June payment, which will replenish the capital projects, debt service, capital. Uh, let me start at the top: debt service, pension, debt, capital projects, transportation, and bus replacement and will allow us to pay um, those debt payments that are coming due, et cetera. So, any questions regarding that information? Then for everyone's benefit, Jennifer, since uh, you talked about how capital projects is replenished on a semi-annual basis, there was a $7,100 revenue influx during April. And what was the source of that revenue influx? It was our, um, it, it's not called Cajun anymore, but it's our county um, has some, I'm trying to think what it's called, local option income taxes. And it comes in every month. Um, this year, when they changed the way in 17 that we could allocate that local option income tax. And before, we had to spread it across those taxable funds. But in 2017, they allowed us to choose where we wanted all of that money. And uh, we chose the capital projects this year um, just as a way of funding that because we knew we were having some capital issues. And so it can't go into the general fund. That wasn't even an issue, an option. And so uh, the capital projects seemed like the best option at the time. And so um, for 2018, when we build the budget, we can decide where we want to place that money. We can split it up or we can put it all in one place. So we are getting a monthly income 
from that local option tax of $6,306.67. And that's coming every month now. Thank you. I felt it was important for all of us to have a way to monitor cash flow by from You folks do it as a board. We do it as the administrators. We have so much interest within the community. And obviously, finance has been one of our main concerns. And so I ask that we kind of do this on a monthly basis so that our patrons see a little transparency on our cash flow and all the funds. Now you'll notice we're one third of the way through this year, and our cash balance in that general fund is almost identical to where we started the year, and we're a third of the way through it. What that means is we're not spending more than we're taking in. That's what you have to watch. And I just think it's our benefit to be more transparent with you folks with regard to cash flow. So I've asked you to kind of create this on a monthly basis for you. Well, on behalf of the board, I'd like to thank you and Jennifer for preparing this for us. Okay, item number 16. Um, I don't think we need to take any action. Uh, our librarian, Laura Jones, attended and presented at the uh, Federation Conference in Peru a week or so ago, whenever it was. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> and item 17, superintendent comments. The items listed here under capital projects for this summer, mm -hmm. we spoke to earlier with Terry's question. So let me, let me say something else. Um, Mark Twain, I guess, said it best when he was told that his obituary was reported in the newspaper. He took the opportunity to write, the conditions of my death have been greatly exaggerated. <laughs> well, I came with you in January, and I heard some obituaries, not about people, but I heard some obituaries about the institution. We're going to survive or aren't we going to survive? And I listened to those obituaries and then decided, with the help of five people sitting with me up here, that those reports were greatly exaggerated. All you got to do is put your arm to the grindstone and go to work. Figure out the best way to deal with it. It's a good system. It needs to continue. Well, the proof's in the pudding in the three pages of an agenda here, folks. To me, this isn't an obituary. For me, what this is saying is that we've got a vision and we've got a plan to accomplish that vision. Why? Because we've got five people sitting up here that care. They're knowledgeable and they work hard at caring about this system. We have people out there that care just as much. And we quit that caring, then our obituary should be print printed on the front page. But I don't see this as an obituary. I see it as a vision and a plan for accomplishing that vision. I don't care how these people get here. You can get them here any way you want to. You can appoint them or you can elect them. I don't care. What I care is how they behave think and behave on behalf of the kids of this school system. That's what I care about. Sorry, I'm going to shut up. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, hard act to follow. <laughs> Board comments. Which end we start at? Well, I'm going to start because I found it telling that Bob said, I just killed that they behave. And he was looking at me when he said it. That's all I've got. That's because I moved back. No, really, that's, that's all I've got. Well, this was a lot better. Um, I guess that, that uh, kind of inspires me to comment, too, about Dr. Boyd and what he's been able to bring to us. So tonight, part of the three pages was something he saw when he arrived here. So that was a... Uh, 
good for us and it's part of um, came to us due to his experience that he's been around a while. So, and then secondly, I, of his excitement, I appreciate the people who have chosen um, to come to Argus because they can read just like everyone else and they could choose to go somewhere else. And we have people who chose to come here and it's a good place. And Dr. Boyd and, and some of us longer than others will be here to, to try to see that this continues on. So. For me, I appreciate the people who chose Argus. You guys could have gone somewhere else, and you came here, so I appreciate that. Okay. Um, secondly, um, tomorrow night, I believe, is awards night. That's what I have on my calendar. So I just wanted to put a shout out to the people who come and give money to our students um, in the way of scholarships and so on. And John and Jenny, you might be able, I mean, uh, tomorrow night, one is dollar, Argus dollars for scholars started year well Mandy's not that good with the numbers Mandy's, a, <laughs> Mandy's more of a she's more of a thinker and a planner but many of you know Argus Dollars for Scholars was started years ago um, we we alone I believe tomorrow night are giving seven eight seven thousand to eight thousand dollars some of that's money that's been raised for years some of it's people sitting here like Mandy our president who work very hard and while it seems like giving a student $500, $250, $700, it's not much, but at the end of the night, us and other people who are from this community that have set up donations will give away nearly $20,000, I believe. So for our little community, uh, we read in our newsletters about places that give away a lot more, but I've always been comfortable with what gets done here. And so tomorrow night's another nice night at Argus in that some students will leave here with some money and it will only be a drop in the bucket but um, they might remember us and come back someday done <laughs> Here's the letter. Um, welcome to our new teachers I'm happy to have you I'm glad you could make it here tonight so we can put a face um, with the name for some of you and thank you Ned for showing up uh, for the meeting. Our, our incumbent superintendent getting a jump start on observing how things work out here at Argus, and we're happy to have him. And um, yeah, come come tomorrow night to the Senior Awards banquet and see all the good things um, that go on here at Argus. It's a fun, happy night. Uh, thank you. Welcome board new teachers. I think this is the first meeting I was at we hired new people and everyone was here. That's, that's great. It always drives me nuts when you hire somebody and they're like, well, I can't make that meeting. <laughs> we can't make the hire. <laughs> so, I wouldn't do that. Thank you. That's all I got. Well, echo what my uh, compatriots said up here about welcoming the people. Thank all of you for attending tonight. And our two superintendents on duty tonight. I love it. And um, I'll just say I am excited about Argus's future. We've got good people on board. We're headed the right direction, in my opinion. And we're going to let the dragons soar. So. Is there a motion for adjournment? So moved. I'll second it. <laughs> New record for second right there. <laughs> Any discussion? No. Okay. Well, <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. At uh, 7.50. Thank you all.